when you took physical science, you learned about how heat transfers from one type of matter to another in three different ways. And I want to apply that to how the atmosphere works because you'll see the three types of heat transfer through the matter in the atmosphere as the sun's energy uh, penetrates it and gets to us on Earth. So just a review about what the atmosphere is. It's the layer of gases surrounding the Earth, and it has two jobs. One is to protect the Earth um, from the sun's radiation because some of the waves can be harmful to our health. It also helps to regulate temperature of our surface on the Earth, so that way we don't see huge extremes from high temperatures to low temperatures based on um, the way that the Earth faces from night and day, the way some other planets experience. The most abundant elements in the air um, in the atmosphere are nitrogen, oxygen, and argon, and the most abundant compounds are carbon, di carbon dioxide and water vapor. So it's the same formula for water vapor as it is for water, it's just H2O, but in this case it's a gas instead of liquid like we normally see. Earth's atmosphere is heated by the transfer of energy from the sun. Some heat comes from absorbing the rays by the gases in the atmosphere. And some of the rays enter indirectly because the surface absorbs the energy and then in turn gives it off as heat so that's something called radiating from the surface itself. So here's just a picture of all three of these processes going on. So in the first part, radiation moves energy through space from the sun to earth in light waves, and in turn it heats the earth's surface. Letter B says that near the earth's surface, the atmosphere, the air, is heated because of conductions. So there's contact between the gas and the surface of the earth. And then as a result, convection currents are caused by unequal heating of the atmosphere. And we'll get into all the details of that in the next few slides. So let's start with radiation because all of the source of this heat and energy is coming from the sun. And the main way that we get that energy is through the light waves that travel from the sun to the earth. So it travels through those, through space, through empty space as waves, and this is called radiation. And while it passes through the atmosphere, a lot of waves that have wavelengths that are shorter than visible light are absorbed by gases before they can get all the way down to us. Waves that have longer wavelengths can reach the lower atmosphere where we are, but carbon dioxide and water vapor are able to absorb some of them. Visible light is able to pass all the way through, and so we can see that, um, and there's only a small amount of absorption by the Earth's surface itself. And this picture really accurately demonstrates how much is able to go through and is absorbed or reflected by the surface and the clouds and other things in the atmosphere. You may have heard of the greenhouse effect before, and many of you may have actually been in a real greenhouse. And um, it, to imagine a greenhouse is a good way to think about how the atmosphere uh, interacts and allows the rays to pass through it in certain ways. So thinking of an actual greenhouse, the glass of the outside of the greenhouse allows the light that we see and the heat rays from the sun to go through and it ends up warming the surfaces on the inside of the greenhouse. And then as those surfaces start to transmit rays, then the glass prevents those rays from escaping really quickly because they end up getting trapped. So in the same way, Earth's atmosphere reduces that ability for the escape of energy that's coming back off of the Earth's surface after it's been heated up. So it, when we talked about conduction before, um, especially back in physical science class, this is the transfer of energy when heat goes from one substance to another by direct contact. So they're actually touching. Solids have molecules that are really close together, so they're very, they're very good at conducting heat or allowing the heat to pass straight through them because they bump into each other a lot easier. The molecules of air, though, are far apart, so air is a poor conductor. It takes a lot more energy to make those molecules bump into each other. Conduction only heats the lowest few centimeters of the atmosphere because that's where the air comes into direct contact with the Earth's warm surface. So as that, that um, air gets heated up, it then starts to rise, and we start to see 
another type of heat transfer form. You might be able to tell through this picture what's, what's about to happen. So we end up seeing convection. That's the process in which air or other matter that's like a fluid could rise or sink because of differences in temperature. Convection happens when we have a gas or liquid that's heated unevenly, so that means it's not heated the same way all throughout. And if you think about how big the atmosphere is, you know that's very likely that there are going to be different parts of the atmosphere, atmosphere heated in different ways. So as air heats by radiation or conduction, it becomes less dense because the molecules move away from each other and they move faster and they begin to rise above the cooler air. That cooler air then becomes warmer because it's closer to what's heating it up, and so this causes a cycle of air sinking and rising within the atmosphere. This will lead us into talking about the different levels or layers of the atmosphere, and then later on this will help us understand why certain weather patterns happen. If you have questions about heat transfer and how it relates to the atmosphere, please write those down on your notes and be sure to ask them in class when we're together again. Hope you have a good night.